Suddenly, um, I've just completed a book titled Evaluation of Language Assessments, published by Routledge in 2017. Um, in this book, I explore how we can evaluate language assessments by using an ethical framework that involves fairness and justice. I think this is very important because, after all, if tests are not fair, then what would be the point of a test? And if institutions are not just, then that would lead to unfair practices and unfair tests. So I've put these two together, um, fairness and justice, fairness in terms of as, uh, people, how assessments have to be fair to people, and justice in terms of how institutions have to be just to the people institutions serve. So that's uh, been my uh, focus for the last two or three years. It will continue to be the focus uh, in the next year or two. Um, I will complete some empirical studies that are related to fairness and justice uh, of uh, assessments around the world. Um, I'm eagerly looking forward to uh, uh, a more empirical sort of uh, approach uh, currently. Uh, the book was a, a more conceptual uh, approach with some illustrations of past research, but I'm hoping to do some new research uh, for this area, in this area. So what I'd like to do next is examine the responsibilities of uh, institutions which administer assessments around the world. Uh, institutions which could be small, like uh, groups of teachers developing tests in some parts of the world, to uh, large institutions uh, that administer, develop and administer tests that are administered to thousands and thousands of test takers. So I'd like to look at uh, global responsibility and global justice in terms of language assessment. And uh, I would like to, uh, you know, have a uh, framework which I can, which people can use to uh, assess whether the, the assessments they've produced and the assessment practices that uh, they have in place um, are just uh, from a universal point of view by and large. Uh, and are not parochial, um, you know, uh, like um, what most people say. Uh, we, do, we do this our way. Uh, that would be a parochial approach, but we hope that uh, institutions worldwide uh, would have uh, a more global approach, a more universal approach, shall I say, to uh, examining the quality of their tests uh, in terms of fairness, as well as uh, whether their institutions are just. Well, it's, it's uh, always nice to know that people are interested in learning uh, a language. In this case, learning English. Um, English has become the dominant language in the last 50 years, uh, and more so in the last 20 years with the radio, television, and the internet. So we welcome uh, learners from many parts of the world, and we are, uh, I'm particularly happy to work in this region where there are more and more uh, learners and students in schools, colleges, and universities interested in learning English. Now, what this um, might do for the region is, uh, you know, uh, more uh, language learners from varied backgrounds. So we'd have people from the big cities, say Beijing and Shanghai and Guangzhou and Hong Kong and Macau. And uh, we'd have people from rural areas, from provinces, from uh, villages who also want to learn English, I mean, children want to learn English. Uh, there is, of course, this disparity. So you have um, possibly uh, learners from the big cities uh, who have probably enormous opportunities to develop English uh, learning and uh, activities and travel that are related to English. And we probably have uh, students from rural areas, from villages and small towns who don't have such opportunities. Uh, so that's, there is going to be that disparity. But we'd have to make sure that there are multiple ways we can reach uh, people who have different means. Uh, we want to encourage people who want to learn English to learn English well. So we need to have, uh, of course, uh, appropriate uh, teaching methodology, 
uh, textbooks, materials, other resources. Uh, these days on the internet, um, through phones, to tablets, uh, so that learners anywhere are not uh, deprived of uh, good quality materials for learning English. They don't have to depend on a library far away, as in the old days. They can be in their home if they have internet connection. Uh, they can make use of the resources that any big city uh, boy or girl might uh, have access to. It also uh, is possible that more students would, going, would be going to universities uh, in China and Hong Kong and Macau. And this would mean that uh, we should be prepared as teachers of English to welcome students who are probably good in other matters but not very proficient in English. We have to uh, take them in and uh, give them appropriate instruction for six months or a year, get them up to speed so that they can then uh, go on to uh, uh, studying um, subject areas that they desire. So in all, I think uh, all I can say is that as a, an applied linguist, as a teacher of English, as a language assessment professional, we should be ready for this challenge in the next 5, 10, 20 years when we will have uh, more and more language learners uh, from the region uh, learning English.